guys, Mr. Sonnenberg here. Uh, today we're going to be talking about structures and forces. This is topic two in your textbook for you science student, science seven students. And today we're going to be talking about joints. And so what are they? What are the different types? How can we make our structures more rigid? But what are some of the problems we face when we go ahead and we um, try to reinforce these joints? So what are joints? So first thing we have to look at, and I'd really like you to uh, get a piece of paper out, maybe pause the video, and start uh, taking down some notes on these things, writing them down, going over the video, playing, pausing, and rewinding so you can better understand what uh, all these different types of joints are and how we can uh, reinforce the joints in structures. So we have two types of joints that we'll have to understand. The first one is right here. It is uh, actually called mobile joints. So these are joints that allow movement. So if we take a look at the leg here, the structure, uh, poor old me <laughs> with my sore knee and my uh, immobility, immobility uh, I have a mobile joint in my knee and I'm struggling with it, but it allows movement. So the, the word mobility allows to move. If you're mobile, you're able to move. And uh, then the second one, or the second type of joint that we need to understand is a rigid joint, which is right here. So rigid joints do not allow movement. So they're very rigid. Think of rigid, it's very strong, it's still. So rigid joints aren't going to allow that movement. So here uh, in this table leg here, we want to try to create a rigid joint so that this leg doesn't move or else our table will collapse when we have it standing on its legs. Down here as well, okay, we want to create these joints so that these structures don't move as well. So we look at these joints. So those would be uh, more rigid joints. And right here we have uh, a mobile joint, okay? So mobile pointing down to here, okay? Rigid joints we're going to see here. And here's it just as a few examples. Again, please make sure you're writing stuff down or writing down key points, okay? So this, what do we need to do in order to create strong joints, either rigid joints or mobile joints? Well, we need to add a few things. So we have to do add these things called fasteners. So if you take a look here, we have nut, bolt, we have uh, washers, okay? So we call these right here our washers. Uh, right up here we have our bolt, and right here we have our nut, okay? Uh, just other examples of some fasteners over here. And down at the bottom, we have uh, other fasteners as well. These are screws, okay? So uh, just your regular screw, and then up here, uh, just looks like a deck screw here. So fasteners are things such as nails, staples, bolts, screw, screws, rivets, and dowels. So the one problem that we have, so you'll see this unfortunately right here, is that uh, the holes that are made, so if I was to... Uh, drill a hole through so I could put my bolt in then I put the washer on the other side so it goes around here and then I actually am going to twist the nut on all the way up until the uh, fastener actually fastens the structure and makes it very rigid so I want to make a rigid joint okay all right rigid joint so that's my goal now what happens is we actually weaken the structure by making holes in the structure. Okay, so every time we make a hole in the structure, we weaken it. So these fasteners need to hold it in place, but now the overall strength of the structure has been decreased and it's weakened. Okay, so one fastener allows movement when the parts are pushed or pulled, whereas more than one will make a more rigid joint. So basically, if I was to put one screw, uh, take two two by fours, okay and I have them like here and I put one on top and I put a fastener in through here I put a little screw in through here with my drill okay uh, what am I doing so I've got my drill just pushing down okay in this direction I put one in is that stru structure going to be strong no it's gonna be weak so then I put another one in I put one up through in this direction okay put one in through the inside in the direction and make sure it's going into both pieces of wood. So uh, how do we increase the strength of our joints? Well, we need we can add fasteners. The more fasteners we add, the stronger the joint's going to be. But every time I put holes in uh, material, I weaken the overall structure of the material. 
So the next thing we need to talk about are what are interlocking shapes. So you're going to see a few pictures of actually the construction of my house uh, before I was exhausted and it was a pain in the butt. But this is the first step and it looks like we have uh, little Lego blocks. So if you look, take a look at this picture and this picture here, it's these blocks are almost like chunks of Lego. So if you look right here, you can actually see that they interlock within each other. And this is called ICF. ICF blocks. Okay, so what happens is in these blocks, this is made of styrofoam out here, this white part, and it has a web inside that ties it together. And we'll talk about ties next. And what you do is you actually structure it and then you brace it. And you can see these braces. Well, you brace the wall, and then what happens is is you dump concrete from the concrete pumper down into these walls, and the concrete forms right on the inside all through this spot in here okay and it actually keeps a nice strong wall and it insulates the outside and the interior and the exterior of the walls and it's actually quite easy to construct so pretty interesting uh, they're like Lego so I've drawn Lego up here for a reason okay so we have Lego because interlocking shapes actually fit within one another to strengthen the structure so it says dovetail joints in drawers uh, dental filings and folded seams are some examples. Well, the, here's a dovetail structure. Now, look at uh, if you look at this little bit right here, and if you just follow it down, actually, that is called dovetailing. So they interlock and they fit together to increase this uh, the joint and make sure that it's a riv rigid joint and that it's not going to pull apart or break or uh, move basically. So rigid joints don't move, mobile joints move. So our knee, elbows, we have mobile joints in our body, our wrist, but uh, in these structures we really want to try to produce a lot of rigid joints. So like the web in the ICF blocks I just showed you, we have ties. So what are ties? Big question mark. What are they? Well these are things like thread, string, rope that fasten things together. So if you take a look at this image right here, these things are fastened together by large cables, okay, and they're string-like. Uh, these are metal ties right here, and these are actually used for concrete. So if I was to take my form, and I'll just draw uh, my concrete form, and it's a thin sheet of plywood, and I draw, put it on each side, and I actually have little notches in here. And these notches are actually for these ties to go into here. So then that tie is actually going to be put in between the concrete, okay, these ties and I'm going to put one down here and they're going to hold it together and tie it together okay and then I pour my concrete okay through the top and then these hold the forms which are these outside the forms okay together and then they're held together by ties to hold the structure okay so that's what ties are see a few examples here and just see if you can think of some other examples of ties that you might possibly use could be rope we tie things together all those things those are ties now it doesn't necessarily necessarily have to be for building construction but I'm uh, typically referring to it because uh, I just built a home <laughs> so it's on my brain so now we have uh, adhesives and funny story about adhesive I was actually working when I was 16 years old and I was out at a lake cabin and we were installing rakehead windows, these giant beautiful windows in this home. But I actually had to go under the structure into the crawl space and I had to insulate uh, all the floor joists so that we could keep the hot air in and no cold air got in to freeze up pipes and stuff like that. So anyways, I had to go under and do that. But I had to use this stuff, okay, it was called acoustical sealant. And I was, <laughs> I'd never used it before and I had a caulking gun and I actually had to go down and what happened was uh, the space was really crammed so I was very crammed in the space and I came out and I could barely see and I was putting uh, plastic over top and I had to use the adhesive so I'd put it on the tops like this and then I had to take a sheet of plastic and I had to put it over top, okay, over top but it had this ad this glue so I had this glue in between so the red will be the insulation but I had to put this glue to hold the sheet of plastic on 
So what happened was I came out, and this stuff is tough to get off. And I had it all over my face, I had it in my hair, I had all my hands and my arms, and I had to go to an acceleration camp for hockey. And this stuff was sticky, and it was sticking to me, and I couldn't get it off for a while. So adhesives, they stick to you. They're sticky substances. I've never forgotten having black acoustical sealant all over my clothes, in my hair, on my mouth. Looked like I tried to eat it. And, uh, and so... This stuff is very sticky, but you can use those in structures. Uh, we put acoustical sealant. If I had a wall framed, I could actually use acoustical sealant. So if I had my studs like this and then another stud beside and another one beside, I would actually use acoustical sealant in those joints when I'm going to drywall because I need to put what we call poly on, which is like plastic and it's a vapor barrier. And I'd put it all in these joints to make sure that we can keep the joint airtight and we can also strengthen strengthen the overall structure but if you take a look here here's a carpenter applying carpenter's glue it's an adhesive and it's a sticky substance substance that's going to hold things together so we've uh, some of you have probably used hot glue guns like this one up here and that is a hot or that hot glue is a thermal setting glue so we heat it up it's hot, it holds things together, and then when it cools, it actually binds to the material and it holds it together really well. Okay, So um, this actually bonds to different substances. So these adhesives create bonds, excuse me, and they bond to the substances. So carpenter's glue is right here. We have PL at different strengths, 400, 375, okay? And that is how adhesive it is and how it sticks to different structures or substances and how it adheres and it bonds to the structure okay so think about bonding with a friend if you're bonding with a friend you're not separated sitting in different rooms you're bonding you're doing things together you're sticking together like glue so sometimes people might say hey look at those two friends they stick together like glue that means that you're bonding your adhesive okay so adhesives can also be uh, health hazards so like super glue for example which dries very quickly when you use it and it possibly bonds to your skin if you touch it and it actually can release uh, harmful chemicals and vapors as it hardens but it's also very dangerous as it once it bond, bonds to you if, with your skin it's very difficult to get off okay so we have to use uh, sometimes solvents and they actually uh, reverse the reaction and they're actually going to sometimes take these uh, glues and break the chemical bonds so that we can get them off Okay, so that's what adhesives, they're sticky substances that hold things together. So if I want to glue wood, I always put it in joints. When I make cabinets, uh, we'll just put a little layer of glue and then we'll tack them together with fasteners or nails. Okay, but you put the glue just to strengthen the overall structure and create rigid joints, strong rigid joints. And that's what we're talking about here are joints. And the last uh, little bit we'll talk about is using melting. So I can melt different metals. So I don't know if any of you... Uh, know any welders but if you take a look at the image up here this is a gentleman or an individual sorry I shouldn't say gentleman that is melting structures down by welding so they're taking pieces of metal and they're actually heating them up and they're creating rigid joints okay uh, rigid joints so if you take a look at the ceiling oops joints oops my bad so if you take a look at uh, even the the ceiling in the science lab, if you take a look up right now and you look at those frame structures, those steel frame structures that look like beams running across the ceiling in the science lab, you'll actually notice that those structures, the joints were actually welded together. They didn't just stick them in there and nail them with fasteners. They, they melted the metals and it creates a very strong rigid joint. So another one I've talked about is soldering, okay, or soldering. And that's, they have a soldering gun here. And so they're actually taking in their, their melting plastics and metals. And you can actually melt things and you can create those bonds by taking the metals and then they bond together, okay, through that melting process. All right. And that's what we're doing here. So it just creates heat and it actually melts them and then it can melt things together. So that's using melting as well. So we can use fasteners, we can use melting, we can use adhesives we can use ties and this is how we can create rigid joints and this is how we can create mobile joints but we can increase the overall uh, uh, 
ability for a structure to be rigid but sometimes when we put holes in like when we use fasteners we actually are decreasing the overall strength of the structure we're just making it more rigid so it doesn't move but it's not as strong in terms of holding and supporting a load it's not as strong of a structure but it is very rigid and it's tough to move or break okay so the last thing we're going to talk about is these cool little inventions the in the accidental glue Okay, so it's a real huge success story. Post-it notes. So these post-it notes actually, okay, these post-it notes was an accident. It was an accidental glue. So it turned into a huge success story. So this glue did not meet the specifications. Is it couldn't hold things together very well as it was weak. So then they instead of just scrapping the idea, they actually ended up putting it on pieces of paper, and that's how we get post-it notes because it's strong enough to hold a piece of paper on the wall and if I should really be sticking post-it notes to my forehead because I can't remember anything so but these post-it notes it was an accident so a huge success story tried to make glue wouldn't hold things together it just wasn't adhesive enough it just didn't create enough of a bond with structures so it couldn't stick so they just used it with pieces of paper and now we have these post-it notes and I'm sure you've all seen them um, all, all over the place in schools but it was a huge success story but that is an, an example of an adhesive okay so anyways guys that's joint so all this stuff uh, how do we increase the the strength of a joint well we add things like ties we tie them together we add things like fasteners so screws nuts bolts all those things staples uh, how do we increase well we can melt metals and plastics together Okay, to increase the overall strength. And that's how we create those joints. What are the two types of joints? Well, we have rigid joints and we have mobile joints. And mobile joints mean it's the ability to move, and rigid means it's strong and sturdy and it's not moving. So understand the difference between those two, and then understand what fasteners are, what adhesives are, what ties are, okay? And also how we can use melting to help us create rigid strong joints okay well guys that's the end of the screencast uh, again if you want to go back you can uh, pause you can rewind you can watch this again and I really strongly urge you to write down these notes for your own uh, for your own notes in your in your binders and such so you can study and uh, and I urge you to watch it over again if you're having some troubles with these concepts. But hopefully this has helped. Thanks for tuning in. I guess we'll see you guys on the next screencast. Bye, guys.